Welcome to the God is Not an Asshole podcast. If you are one of the many people done with religious dogmatism, hang on. You might sense transcendence, but your church or other faith community never seem to get off the ground. You realize that honoring your conscience means more than fitting in and keeping hard to explain rules? Hang on. You could probably think of the goodness in your tradition, and you tried your best to save that baby, but there's so much bathwater. Join your host, David Norman Moore Jr. in California and Carrie Connolly in New Jersey, who are collaborating to bring on guests who have found life on the other side of fundamentalism. Guests with stories of how they have liberated themselves from beliefs that divide us from each other. None of our guests' narratives are identical, but we hope you'll find something in common with each of them. We invite you to experience our common bond as we all inspire even more of us to embrace the true self. David Hayward, uh, he is the naked pastor. Um, and after 30 years in the church, he left the ministry to pursue his passion for art. He uses words and images to challenge the status quo, deconstruct dogma, and offer hope for those who struggle and suffer under it. David is no stranger to belief systems. He holds a master's in theological studies, as well as diplomas in religious studies and ministry and university teaching. He is Canadian. His art expresses the stories and struggles of spiritual refugees and independent thinkers who question, doubt, or oppose the confines of religion. Each piece encourages difficult conversations and acts as a catalyst for critical thinking. And I will say that my favorite series of yours, the series is the question mark. I, I've used them, uh, you know, to communicate with people. Um, there's, there's one where, uh, it's a church scene and, and, the the pews are filled and there are a few people who turn around and they look like they're grousing a bit. And there is an usher who is welcoming a, a couple, except one of the couples is shaped like a question mark. And the caption is, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome here, but not your friend. <laughs> so david yeah how did you get to this place yeah you know thanks for having me on your show david and carrie um you know every time i'm introduced as a naked pastor i still giggle i don't know why i've been doing naked pastor now for since 2005 so but giggling still... is good i approve of giggling <laughs> um yeah i uh I've been around the block. Like um, I've, I've said before, I'm my own ecumenical movement. I was raised in the church, all kinds of churches. Um, we weren't loyal to any one denomination. So I think that was in my kind of uh, planted into my attitude was you know, I never felt any commitment to any one denomination or theology. Uh, so I, I was I felt free to search and explore and discover what fit for me and that yeah so that that's how i uh yeah yeah free range chicken and um uh -huh. i uh you know i I've, I've been in the you know i was baptized anglican been around and then you know i got spiritual direction from catholic priests and nuns and i got ordained as a presbyterian i, I was saved in a Baptist church. I got filled with the spirit in a Pentecostal church. I went to a Pentecostal Bible college, went to an evangelical seminary, ordained Presbyterian. And then I ended up in the vineyard church. So mm -hmm. I've, I've been around, um, but I started blogging in 2005 or tuning in 2006. And that inevitably led to me kind of needing to leave the ministry in 2010. And uh, I devote a full time to naked pastor after that, and here I am. I love Believe it. Believe it or not. So, so um, I there are so many of your images that are kind of burned into my my memory I'm, and the rainbow. I'm sorry. The, no, it's good. It's it's good. It's so good. And the rainbow sheep series is definitely yeah. the, the big yeah. part, a, a big part of it. And I'm looking at one right now, and it 
It has the rainbow sheep st- uh, standing outside of a church, and but and he's wearing or they are wearing a white costume or not. I mean, uh, they're holding on a hanger the white uh, a white sheepskin, I guess. And it's and they say I have to put this on before I can go in. And then there's a a black Jesus and that's holding a white Jesus costume <laughs> that says that I have to put this on. <laughs> and I I love that so much because you're just kind of tackling most of the issues yeah. there, you know, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. um, and what I love about that is, uh, or what I'm curious about is how did you, how did you get to a place where you were like, I need to start drawing about this? What's that? What's the origin story of, of this work? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I think for me, it started with growing up with friends who were gay and um, black or brown, um, different religions or no religion, and really loving them and them loving me and me not being able to compute how, you know, Christianity I was being taught fit with the fact that these were beautiful people and they loved me and I loved them. And, um, and in my mind, I'm thinking, Geez, if I were God, I wouldn't throw these people into hell, like, you know, kind of mm-hmm. attitude. Mm-hmm. And, um, of course, a lot of people would have mm-hmm. theological issues with that. But mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I just always had that thing going on inside of me where this just doesn't make sense. And then I had a, if, if I could share a story with you, um, nice. I had, you know, graduated from seminary and then I got my, topped it up with an MDiv, a diploma in ministry. Et cetera. I got ordained in the Presbyterian Church, and and anyway, uh, friends of ours who were down in Boston, that's where I went to seminary. We decided I'm in Canada, as David pointed out, um, in the Maritimes. We decided to meet up in Bangor, Maine, and hang out in a hotel room, and you know, enjoy the hot tub, go out to eat. We were good friends for a long time, and so the four of us, he and his wife, and Lisa and I, met in this hotel, and. We'd gone out to eat and we were talking about they uh, they were living in a in a building, um, a home with two apartments. They had one apartment. The other apartment was um, being rented by two women, same sex marriage. Well, they were, weren't married, but in a relationship. And, you know, we, we were talking all about that. And I'm in my mind, I'm trying to make theological sense of all this. Right. Anyway, we decided after we got back to the room to fill our travel mugs with wine and go down to the hot tub. And we did. And there was a couple of guys there and, you know, we were in the hot tub and we were just chatting away and they were saying, what do you do? And my friend was an editor for a publishing firm. And I said, I was a minister. Immediately one of them got up and left, went into the pool. And the other guy said, you have to excuse them. We've got really, we're, we're gay and we've had a really negative experience with the church and, you know, mm. and, uh, I was like, like, yeah, like what? I said, well, we're gay and we live in a small town in Maine. And when people found out they cut off, like they couldn't get furnace oil, stores wouldn't serve them. Uh, restaurants wouldn't serve them. The church kicked them out and the list goes on. And I thought that this just, wow, it's just, you know, and so, um, I, you know, that, that was quite a few years ago, but in 2006, when I started cartooning, I, I realized that the church was kind of drawing a line in the sand here. This is one of the issues, um, is with the LGBTQ plus community and willing to die there. And it just didn't make sense to me. And, and so I just started challenging that line with, with my cartoons and, um, hopefully, soften up some hearts or change some minds or or something and and um you know i know i know these cartoons are encouraging to some people but they're you know quite outrageous for some and uh mm-hmm. but i i hope they're making a dent the, so david yeah um this person who who left um the hot tub their dismay is and that's not strong enough a word but their their dismay is very understandable and mm-hmm. and yeah. and not hard to support. Um, we have had a number of LGBTQ plus 
or in Canada, you would add two spirit. Um, we've had a number of mm -hmm. guests like that. Um, and somehow they've been able, you know, I, I'm sure that, that it, it took different measures of time for, for each of them. But one of the things that Carrie and I have noticed is that the resentment is gone. And, and that's not yeah. just true for, for them, but um, right. all of our guests, because I mean, the nature of this particular show is to uplift people who have had negative experience with dogma. Um, but the people who, who come out of it that, that we have had conversations with um, mm -hmm. have also left resentment behind. And um, I'm, I'm wondering, I, why you can be angry but not resentful? How do, what does that feel like and look like? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I, I, uh, I've said that before. You're asking good questions, I guess. Um, <laughs> you know, if any of us want to move on from an unhealthy relationship or whatever, part of the healing process is, is letting that go. And part of letting that go is to forgive that person. And I think that's what it, it means it, it it it's not necessarily letting them off the hook as much as getting the hook out of our own hearts and mm -hmm. and and letting that letting that go and and for some let's say a woman who leaves an abusive husband she might be able later on to say you know i i just realized he just wasn't capable of you know he had his own issues you know he had trauma you know, and he learned, she learned that her people hurt people and, you know, so on and so forth. And so she's allowed, she, she can let it, she can let it go and the resentment go, realizing mm. that she was trying to get blood from a stone kind of a thing. So, mm. and I, I see a lot of people, with, same with the church, understanding that, you know, in fact, my cartoon today is exactly about that, where, um, a woman, uh, a woman is breaking up with the church uh, and they're on a couch together and the church is crying and she's saying to the church, you, you've been good for me in many ways, but I can't put up with your control and abuse any longer. And, <laughs> and it's, it's like that. It's like that with people with the church It's like, I got so much good out of it, out of our relationship, but I, you know, I, I refuse to be hit anymore or, or whatever. Right. So in that way, you can, I think a person can move on and, and the resentment eventually goes. And like you said, for some people, the timeline might be a little bit longer than others. Well, I think what what's really important there th that you you just kind of pointed out is is there, there has to be a balance between forgiveness and, and holding a boundary. Right. And saying, yes, I, yeah. I yeah. refuse to, to be treated this way anymore or I'm this is this is unacceptable, right? Because I think sometimes the the idea of for our own healing, we need to forgive sometimes can be a little bit spiritually bypassy if because if we're not giving ourselves permission to move through the anger and the grief yeah, yeah. and and all of that, right? We can't just jump right to forgiveness. And sometimes you get there and they fall right back into it, you know. Yeah. Um because the the hurt can be so so deep, and you know, this is not something. Well, yeah, no. I mean, I never really experienced anything like this. I was told that when I was on a church staff, I was told that I needed to stop writing in support of LGBTQ, or I would lose my job. Um, mm. But the, I was still in a place of deep privilege at that time. So even if I had lost my job, I would not. It was a part time job, and I was married at the time. So. Um, but to hear that there is a couple who ha is unable to heat their house, to heat their home mm -hmm. because of this kind of bias, that's why it's not just a birthday cake. Like the Supreme Court decision, right? It's It wasn't just about a, a, a wedding cake or a birthday right, cake. It's right, about right. very real needs being met um, mm -hmm. by by a society in, in rural areas or in places where there aren't alternatives. So. Yeah, because if you if you discriminate in the least, it, it's kind of like the the leaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it it takes over the whole loaf. Like it, it just the slightest bit of discrimination means that any discrimination is allowed. Like I, mm -hmm. I think with love, 
uh, discrimination doesn't fit. They don't go together. So, mm. um, well, I mean, discrimination against pe people. This is this is yeah. going to be a shift, but it's just something that uh, I just wondered about when when I last saw you, uh, just you know, a month ago or so. Yeah. Um, you were scheduled to be on Carlton Pearson Live. Yeah. What became yeah. of that? Because I, I was going to tune in. Wow, man. That was, I was so nervous about that because it was a live show. Yeah. And um, Carlton Pearson, you know, yeah. uh, I, I'd watched the, the movie about him, like a docu movie. Yes. Uh, and, come um, Sunday on come Netflix, Come Sunday, yes. I think. Yeah. Yes. So good. And when I watched that movie, I thought, man, we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt really excited. And but, so when I got an invitation um, to meet with him, uh, he, that day, he, he's struggling with um, some illness and he was being, he was in the hospital, yeah. gowned up and everything, yeah. uh, getting, oh, wow. I think, a CAT scan at the time. And so the host of the show, was was live with me and Carlton Pearson was audio because he yeah. you know he wasn't yeah he didn't feel he was presentable and um so yeah we 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 had a great conversation and was good and then at some point he said look man I gotta go I'm not feeling very well and yeah he, you know he got off the line but um yeah it was he was all there though he was yeah he powerhouse he, he is he is brilliant and he's still brilliant yeah. in his compromised um condition but yeah. when when you and i talked and i found out you were going to do this i was surprised because i knew that he was quite ill and i i was i was yeah. amazed that he was still working um but yeah. short just just a couple of weeks ago um or less he it's on youtube he's saying goodbye to the world um oh well, yeah he's he's in hospice mm -hmm. care and so oh that's a, man that's a huge deal. I, I I would certainly covet the um, the link to whatever recording you have of of your conversation with him. I'm sure Carrie and I both would would love to to know about mm. that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll try to remember where it is, and I'll I'll send that to you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, David. I'm I'm curious to know what kinds of responses you get to your work. Right. I think I have an idea, but I would love to do. You... <laughs> Let's talk. <Yeah. laughs> you know, I, I get a lot of, uh, I get a lot of hate and kickback and, and stuff, which is understandable, but I also get a lot of encouraging messages and, and comments and, and it just really encourages me. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's funny. I uh, it's funny how you can have a hundred positive comments and you get one negative comment, and it like it's heavier <laughs> than all yeah, the yeah. one hundred. <laughs> yep, the so, brain biases toward the negative all the time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, do you ever check the profiles of these uh, folks, and do you see a pattern, uh, a demographic kind of pattern? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, for those who do have a profile picture yeah. and a real name, yeah. a lot of them just have the, you know, outline of a yeah. face and then some yeah. user one, three, four, zero dash, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but those who dare to, that's your wife, Lisa, have I think a profile. Uh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's, she's funny. She's funny. Um, mostly uh real some fundamentalist in some way but it could be fundamentalist baptist or fundamentalist lutheran or fundamentalist eastern orthodox or fundamentalist catholic yeah. or or whatever they're just really fundamentalist or like a lot of my cartoons are pro women um be they be very uh mostly Men and um, would you say uh, those men actually, are certain, actually mostly men? Would you say those men are of a certain age? Um, well, I I wouldn't be able to tell their age, but I'd say most. It it doesn't matter. Like uh, there's very young men who can be very patriarchal sure. in their attitudes. Mm -hmm. It's it's fierce. 
And it seems to be getting worse, actually. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, there's a very strong anti-LGBTQ plus, uh, anti-women, um, you know, and, and very orthodox, like whatever denomination they're in, very, very orthodox. And uh, it's and, and fundamentalist dogmatic. So it's uh, it's it's quite quite interesting. In fact, um, I was asked to be on an, a podcast a few weeks ago, and it, the I somebody some people sent me warnings: don't go on his show, don't go on his show. This guy's you know crazy fundamentalist, like he's you know all that. And I'm like, so I reached out to the person. I said, listen, is this going to be awkward? Like I don't like debating. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, it's a waste of time. And, um, and he said, no, I really hope this will be a good show and just, you know, we'll just have a conversation. Ended up, he was a real, he, he was a Roman Catholic and very, very Roman Catholic. And so we had a mm -hmm. very interesting conversation. But interestingly, he asked if the Catholic Church had any influence on my life. And I said it had. A huge influence, like beginning with like Henry Now and then Thomas Merton and others. And I had spiritual directors who were uh, Roman Catholic nuns, actually, um, who gave me spiritual direction. And um, so we, I think that softened it up a bit. And we had a really great conversation after that. But he still said, listen, he still at the end wanted me to convert to Roman Catholicism as the only true religion. So, um, but that's how most people think when they're in their rut, right? Whether it's Lutheran or Presbyterian or Eastern Orthodox or Baptist or whatever, that, that this is the only right way. And, and you need to get into this rut with me. So, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Makes it interesting. So I'm curious if we're going to see any cartoons around the, the Israeli Palestinian conflict. You're going to go in there. It's a hard one. Well, it's, not really hard to be honest, but um, Karl Barth, um, a theologian I, I've always admired, um, the Swiss theologian, um, he had a strategy that I sort of adopted a, a while back because, and his was address the issue, not the situation, or address the issue, not the incident. And hmm. if people are familiar at all with my work, they know where I stand. Mm -hmm. they, they should know where I stand without me having to say, blah, 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 right. blah. I, and otherwise, I'd be chasing incidents down. How many genocides are there happening in the world right now? Five, at least, that we know of. And, um, you know, so, and how many areas in the world are suffering from starvation, you know, and child mortality? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. We could go on and on and on. So, do I want to keep chasing the incidents, or should I keep addressing the issue? And mm -hmm. and the issue is justice and love and peace and the things that matter. So that when people come to my page, they shouldn't say, "Where does this guy stand on Israel or Hamas mm -hmm. or whatever or Palestine?" Right. They should deduce from mm -hmm. from my content where I stand. Right. Which is. My, if, if, if it's similar to mine, you know, it's, it's, I do st believe it's a complex issue, not because I, um, I think that what's happening in Palestine right now is okay. Cause it's by any stretch, by no stretch of the amount, like it's not okay. Um, and I know that some of my Jewish friends it, as individuals are, are experiencing deep embodied fear and, mm -hmm. and that's the complexity for me. You know, mm -hmm. that's the complexity is uh, because they're they are having a very, very uh, human response to that fear that they're feeling. Absolutely. You know? Understandable. And, um, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not unwarranted fear. It's not unwarranted. And, fear. and you know what, um, what far, uh, further maybe uh, complicates what you're talking about, Carrie, is that um, there are some I mean, I I have a Jewish friend. We sat down and talked for a couple of hours. Um, this past Saturday, um, to the the fact that she is Jew causes her causes her to sometimes want to say to the world around her, "But I'm not that kind of Jew." Um, 
And so that's pressure. But I'm not that kind of white person. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, 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 exactly. So, but the yeah. the other side of that exactly. is she, it's she's being sandwiched because because she's not that kind of Jew. She has the Jewish community that she's you know somewhat close to that she's you know in some proximity with saying, well, why aren't you that kind of Jew? And so, I mean, that's right. pressure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, lots of pressure. There's a lot yeah. of, I also similar, similarly have a, um, a black friend who is a woman and she tends to be more, she, she defines herself as a centrist in this. And in, in fact, I think she would be very aligned with, with everything that we're saying that, you know, um, but she feels a lot of pressure from both sides of the community that she works with, right? Cause she works with the uh, Jewish population and she also, knows that many black women specifically are very active in the in the uh, anti-genocide space right now right so mm-hmm. um, so she's feeling a lot so that's what I mean where it's it's complex and yet to your point David it is also very very simple it is not not complex it, right when, when it comes to life it's very simple when it comes to politics it gets complicated and, yes and identity it. identity I think. And identity yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Yeah. So thank you for for being willing to cuz that's that's actually the first time I have been feeling myself pressure internal pressure to write about the topic and I haven't yet um because I haven't felt I have been honestly in in just the space where I could receive the feedback that I know I would receive. So this is the first time I'm even speaking about it mm. publicly. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. um yeah, it's uh it's a complex issue. And those of us who are in the public sphere in any way, I think um, I think it's important for us, to, for people to know where we stand, you know? I think it is important. Thank you so much for being here today. We are people who have left behind performance-based religion and the shame that comes with it. Maybe you have a personal liberation story to tell and we want to know about it. Please contact us on Twitter at God is not an asshole or text 805-703-8393 because the world needs to know that God is not an asshole.